Hey guys, it's a fun day here at the Engadget office. I'm here with the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. It's not every day that we get a new first-of-its-kind product from a company, but here we are. I've had about 24 hours with the new larger MacBook Pro. This replaces the 15-inch, which is going away. So I haven't had it just long enough to do a full proper review, but what you're gonna see today are just some really early impressions, and we'll come back to you with a full review um, sometime later. So as you can see, this is just a standard MacBook Pro, basically mostly the same design, um, just the screen is a little bit bigger. It's 16 inches now up from 15, but really the size of the machine is not that different. And that's because although the screen is larger now, Apple, like a lot of other computer makers out there, use space more efficiently by cutting the bezels both on top of the screen and the sides of the screen. So all told, it's just a little taller, a little longer, and a little wider than the 15-inch MacBook Pro. In particular, with the thickness, it's now um, 0.64 inches, up from 0.61, so it's a pretty negligible difference. I would say the weight is a little, maybe more noticeable this is 4.3 pounds, um, up from a flat four pounds on the 15 inch model. But either way, for a 16 inch machine, and in particular, a machine that is meant to serve the kind of intense workloads this is really built for, uh, 4.3 pounds is still pretty light and pretty portable, all things considered. So back to the screen for a minute. I would say that although we're calling this a 16 inch MacBook Pro, ironically, the screen is actually the least interesting thing about the machine. Yeah, it's bigger, it has a higher resolution of 3072 by 1920. Pretty high brightness of 500 nits, although not the first 500 nit machine we've seen. It supports the P3 color gamut like a lot of other high-end Apple machines out there, uh, which is really good, obviously, for the creative professionals using it, whether they're photographers or videographers. And the pixel density is pretty high. That's 226 pixels per inch. But the overarching, the underlying screen technology is pretty much the same as other MacBook Pros. That's why I say it's really not the most interesting thing about this machine. Yeah, it's a new product, but not quite the redesign that maybe Apple would have you believe. Um, as you can see here, just the materials and design identity are the same. Same ports, you've got two uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports here on my left side, and you've got two more on the right along with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Let's talk about what isn't there. There still is no SD card reader. That's really gonna annoy a lot of the pros who this was designed for. It annoys me, and I don't even consider myself a creative professional. Um, so that's a miss, I think, given the target market. But yeah, let's get onto how this thing has actually changed um, in a more significant way. Um, the keyboard is probably the most obvious change here, and I think might be the thing that a lot of people will be most excited about. Um, so listen up first, the physical escape key has returned. Um, you'll also notice that the arrow keys have been reconfigured a bit. So the side arrows, the left and right one, are um, shorter and smaller than the up and down arrows. And the benefit of that is just they're easier to use by feel. Um, you sort of know without looking which arrow key you're hitting. So that's a good thing, especially for power users who use um, uh, certain keyboard shortcuts a lot. But more importantly, just for the wider range of people, even people beyond just the niche users of certain keyboard macros, the whole keyboard mechanism has been changed here in a way that I think is gonna please a lot of people. So even Apple, their official line now is still, well, most of our users um, are happy with the butterfly keyboard, but even they need to admit now that some people actually really hate it. And of course, the butterfly keyboard has gotten bad press, and for fair reason, a lot of stuck keys, debris getting caught around the keys. So here, Apple really went back to the drawing board. It put its research department to good use. And so what we have here is a keyboard that was inspired by the Magic Keyboard. That's the keyboard that comes with the iMac line. And it's obviously not quite the same keyboard. It had to be adapted for a laptop form factor, but a lot of the design principles are the same. Now, for one thing, that means that Apple is back to a so-called scissor mechanism as opposed to a butterfly mechanism, and that allows for a denser, more satisfying, cushy feel to the keys. They have a full millimeter of travel here, and even looking at the keys, you might even be able to suss out that they are deeper than the flat ones you're used to on more recent. MacBook Pros. But at the same time, one benefit of the butterfly keyboards is that they were less wobbly than keyboards that preceded them. So what you have here, and you, you can't see it in the demo unit I have because I haven't torn it apart, is there are rubber domes under the keys, and those domes lock into the keycaps at the top of the stroke. And so that design, in short, was designed to 
um, keep the keys from wobbling too much back and forth, but still allow them to have pretty deep travel. And the long and the short of it, and I know this is hard to represent on a video, is I think these keys are a giant improvement. I have made very few typos typing on these, no stuck keys. I also had my colleague Devendra, who is a prolific laptop reviewer, take a quick look, and he agreed that they are much better than the ones that they're replacing. And I'll tell you, I also had a chance to test these side by side with a legacy 15-inch MacBook Pro that was pre-Butterfly keyboard. And the keys here were just a lot more stable. The other ones were wobblier, and I actually did make a lot more typos. So the uh, trajectory of progress seems to be upward and forward for Apple, although the butterfly keyboards, um, I think most of us would admit, was kind of a hiccup for the company. So then, of course, um, this wouldn't be a hands-on with a MacBook Pro if we didn't talk about what's under the hood, not just what's visible to the human eye. So under the hood, I'm gonna actually talk about the audio experience. I think this is something that sometimes gets overlooked in laptop reviews. And actually, this is one area where Apple put in a lot of work for this particular product. So under the hood here on the left side, you've got a three mic array. Um, Apple would have you believe that that is studio quality so that you could, let's say, use it instead of a professional mic like a Blue Yeti to record podcasts. And I did have a chance to listen to some comparison recordings, both against the Blue Yeti and also some competing laptops from Dell and Razer. Mm -hmm. It's true that the sound that was recorded on this machine had less of a hiss to it. Um, but that said, I'm eager to do more testing on my own, not just trust someone else's recordings, but maybe we'll try to record an episode of the Engadget podcast or do at least some audio tests on this machine and just see how it works for our purposes. There's also a six speaker set up in here and there are some um, force canceling subwoofers that are meant to cancel each other out specifically when it comes to distortion that would result from vibrations in the machine. And there too, the audio quality really is great. The sound really is louder and bassier than some other computers I've compared it to so far. And I'm eager to do more testing there, but so far it has triumphed, triumphed in a number of different musical styles. Um, not So it's not just a, a one trick pony in that regard. And then, of course, there's performance. So there are different configurations here. And so depending on what you get and to what extent you really choose to level up and add on different upgrades, this can, of course, get very pricey. You can have either a six core or an eight core Intel processor. These are gonna be either Core i7 or Core i9. Either way, they are ninth generation Intel core processors. The base configurations have 16 gigs of RAM, but you can go all the way up to 64 gigs. Likewise, you start with a 512 gigabyte SSD, and if you pony up for it, you can go all the way up to an eight terabyte SSD, which is bonkers. I don't think I've heard of that on a laptop before. Um, for graphics, you're looking at a base of a four gigabyte AMD Radeon Pro 5300M GPU. Then the next configuration is a four gigabyte AMD Radeon Pro 5500M GPU. And then there's an eight gigabyte version of the 5500M that you can get as an upsell, basically. Obviously, this thing promises to be fast in a really screaming sort of way. That's also the sort of thing that we want to take time to test. Um, another thing that's going to take time is the battery testing. So this has a larger battery than before. It's a 100 watt battery, which Apple says, and I did not know this, is the maximum size allowed by the FAA on planes. So we have, we have maxed out until um, policy changes make other things possible. But so it's a 100 watt a battery inside. And Apple also says that it's redesigned the fans, the thermal sink to make this more efficient. And all told, all those factors combined, Apple says that this is now capable of 11 hours of battery life, up from 10 hours on the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Just a note too, that in addition to the larger battery, the accompanying charger is higher capacity too. It looks the same as before. It's the same size, but it is a higher capacity as well. So if you're watching this, you're watching this starting on Wednesday, November 13th. That is the day that the machine goes on sale and it should ship by the end of the week. Um, because this is replacing the 15 inch MacBook Pro, it feels appropriate that it is taking over the same um, categories of prices, same tiers of prices, I should say, which means that the base configuration starts at $23.99 and you can add on upgrades from there. There's also a step up configuration that starts at $27.99 and there's still room for some upgrades on that model as well. Um, but again, those are the prices uh, that you would have paid for the 15-inch version as well. So stay tuned to Engadget. We are going to have a full, more comprehensive review coming up. This is really just early impressions um, to show you what we've gleaned so far and to just walk you through all of the specs and claims here, um, but much more on this front. Um, in the meantime, thank you guys for watching.